Hi, my name is Brian and I'm a medical writer here at Treaty for Medical. One of the issues I find when I'm teaching students anatomy is that they can't relate the names of structures to what they see in dissection. But if you actually know Greek and Latin, it's actually pretty straightforward. Take for example the bones of the wrist. There's eight of them, they're arranged into two rows of four, and if you know what the Greek and Latin origins of these names are, it'll make a lot more sense to you when it comes to learning these structures and identifying them in a dissection. So, the scaphoid. Scaphoid is Greek in origin. It means like a boat. If you isolate this bone and rotate it around, what you'll find is it kind of looks like a boat. So I'm just gonna draw one here. And yeah, it looks like a boat. Yeah, I can see a few sails. Yeah, a couple of waves. Yeah, that's a boat to me. Okay, so the next bone we're gonna take a look at is the lunate. This name, lunate, is Latin in origin. It means like the moon. So if we take this bone, we isolate it in the model. What we'll find then is that if we just turn it uh, slightly, we can actually see the outline of a half moon. So the name of this bone actually makes sense. So the next bone we're going to take a look at is the triquetrum. This bone's name is Latin in origin. It means three corners. Tri meaning three, quetrum meaning corner. So again, if we take a look at this in the model, isolate it, yep, we can see that tree corner-like appearance. So this bone, again, its name makes sense. So the next bone we're going to take a look at is the pisiform. Again, its name is Latin in origin, and it means in the shape of a P. So if we take a look at this in the model, you can really see what they're talking about here, actually. It's a standalone, small, ball-like shaped structure, just like a P. They call it like they've seen it, Happy days, easiest bone to remember of all of them. So the next bone we're gonna take a look at is the trapezium. This bone's name is Greek in origin. It means like a table. Now if I isolate this bone in the model and rotate it a bit, you can kind of make out the table here. It's a bit of a four-sided piece, I suppose. I think they made a jump at this one. So uh, yeah, trapezium, table-like, that's the, we'll leave that one. <laughs> The next one we're going to take a look at is the trapezoid. Again, it's Greek in origin, it means like a table as well. Now if you take a look at this bone, isolate it in the model, and rotate it to a certain angle, you can kind of see that four-sided shape-like appearance. So unlike the trapezium, the trapezoid actually kind of matches what they were trying to say. So go with that one first. So the next bone we're going to take a look at is the capitase. Again, it's Latin in origin, and it means like a head. Now, if you isolate this bone, kind of struggling to see a head in this one, so I think they might have made a bit of a jump here with this one, but we're gonna take their word for us and say, yeah, that looks like a head. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> the final one we're gonna take a look at is the hames. Again, it's Latin in origin. It means like a hook. And if you, if you isolate this bone and you rotate it around, you can actually kind of see from the side that there's actually a hook-like structure sticking out of this bone. So yeah, we just draw that out. Yeah, that one actually makes sense. So that's all the bones that are wrist covered. Like I said before, if you know your Greek and Latin, you are laughing going into the exam. But if you don't know, it's okay. Just remember these simple tips and what they look like and you're sorted.